Hello, welcome to the video for what is material, the main material, part three. Let's go ahead and jump right into this. We covered the first four in the previous video. We're going to go ahead and cover the next four in this video. We're going to start with emissive color. Let me go ahead and plug in an emissive color, and I have yellow here. Now, if I was to go ahead and check out what this looks like, with a default of a yellow, you're not going to see anything really special about it. If I was to take our directional light and turn this all the way down, you are now actually going to see something happening. Let me go ahead and get rid of my atmospheric fog. So this is emissive color. It basically emits light in whichever color or texture or whatever you've put into the emissive color slot. If I was to turn my light back up, you'll notice it's bouncing off of my floor and I get a white reflective, well, a white color on my floor based on my light in the scene. But if my light was to go all the way off, I no longer have that white light. I just have this yellow clit, yellow cube emitting color. That's because it's filled into the emissive color channel. Now, of course, you can go ahead and use a pattern or a texture and it's going to work the same way. This one's going to be a little bit weird, simply due to the fact that black isn't really going to emit much. But you can see the same thing. The white's going to emit, and the black's going to emit black. But basically, emissive is not affected by any lights. It just simply emits light, and it's not affected by external lights. Now, the nice thing about emissive color is you can do what's known as overdriving. If you put a value over 1 for the red, green, and blue inside of your color or your channel or you multiply it for example to a value greater than one it's going to overdrive the value and it's actually going to start giving a glow effect so let's move this up to three for example this will make even though the yellow looks the same it's still a multiple of one and one for yellow we have three and three for our value which is going to give us a overdriven yellow and you're going to see that it looks like it's slightly glowing and if we were to apply this and check it out inside of our scene it's going to give us a nice glowing effect, and it's also going to give us a, um, a little bit of a glowing lens flare effect when we move the camera in and out as well. And of course, you don't have to stop it at 3. You can overdrive this to any other value if you want. You can drive this up to 5, you can drive it up to 10, you can drive it up to 20. You can do whatever you choose to, and that'll basically blow it out even more, and it'll give you a much brighter effect. You don't, if for example you're going to use a texture and you want it overdriven, you just simply use a multiply node, multiply it before it goes into the emissive color, and that'll give you a overblown texture. So that is what the emissive color is for. It's basically a way for it to emit light that is not affect by, if affected by external lighting. You simply plug it into emissive color, and then that's it. I'm going to skip opacity and opacity mask for now because I have to change the blend mode. We'll jump right straight to normal. Now, normal is a way of faking detail. It's pretty simple. It is almost identical to how it used to be used inside of the older workflow formats. And if your material content creation program can create normal maps based on depth, then you just plug it in and you have no problem. Let me put a base color of 1, so that way you have a white texture to work with. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my normal map into the normal slot. And we'll save this and we'll check out what it looks like in the scene. And this is what we have. Now this is a solid white cube. If I was to go ahead and remove this and go ahead and apply it. This is what I should have done first before I applied the normal. But what you're going to do is you're going to see a solid white cube. There is no extra geometry details. Using the normal map, it was faking what looked like basically recessed lines as well as curved corners. And it's using a normal map to do that. We'll go back here and you'll see our normal map is applied and it looks like tiled where you have a recessed lines as well as curved and recessed edges. And that's it. You will know what a normal map is if you're using them. All you have to do is simply plug it into your normal section here and it will work perfectly fine. 
One caveat is inside your normal map itself, depending on where the normal map came from, you may have to flip the green channel. So if your normal map looks like it's backwards, you can always go into your content creation, your browser right here, open up your normal map in your texture section, show advanced is an option called flip green channel. And when you click on that, it basically will flip the green channel and it's going to give you a opposite effect for the normal. Now this normal is incorrect, so it looks wrong. If I go ahead and set it back to what it was before, you'll find the normal now looks back to correct like we wanted it. So if you have an issue where a normal map is backwards, you can go ahead and just use the flip normal channel. So that is our normal map. Let's look at the other two, opacity and opacity mask. In order to unlock opacity and opacity mask, you need to change our blend mode. By default, this is opaque, which means zero transparency, 100% solid. To unlock opacity mask, we would change to the mask mode. To unlock opacity, we would unlock translucent. Let's go ahead and just go with translucent to start with, and we'll work with the opacity node here. So by default, you can see nothing has really happened here. We go back to our material. Let me go ahead and put my light back up. And let me go ahead and put a fog back in the scene. That way we have something that actually looks like something. So as soon as my material decides to finish compiling, we'll go ahead and there we go. And we have our normal, uh, let's move this over so we can, stupid players in the way. Okay, so we have our normal cube. Assuming I can click on it, and I can't. And this is one of those issues you're gonna run into with opaque items, sorry, transparent items. Because it's transparent, I can't click on it. Yeah, let's change the ground. Um, let's give this a different color. Let's see what will happen here. This way we can actually see what I'm trying to get to better here. Yeah, see that's not going to work. Um, that one. Come on. Just give me another material. There we go. Okay. I, I wanted so you could actually see through this. So we have this cube and there's nothing special about the cube. The only problem is because it's translucent, you're going to have a difficult time clicking on it and it's a giant pain in the butt. So how do we use opacity? Opacity is basically a zero to one value that determines if it is translucent or not. Zero is opaque. It is not translucent at all. So if we put this in here and we save it, now we edit the material map. You're going to find that we should see no difference. Okay. Then I have those backwards. Sorry about that. That's the nice thing about the material editor, as you can see, you can simply play with it and get your results. Okay, so I was incorrect. It is backwards. The opacity of 1 is 100% opaque. The opacity of 0 is 100% transparent. So if we hook up 0 0.5, for example, I'm going to go ahead and run this. So basically gray, halfway between 0 and 1, we should have a semi-transparent semi -transparent cube. And if you look, now we do. We can actually see through the cube partially. We can see the floor behind it, and we can see the sky behind that. So that right there is opacity. Now the nice thing, again, opacity does not have to be a solid value. Opacity can be masked with something like this. So if we drop this in here and we go ahead and let it run, we should see where the white and the black parts are. We should see semi-transparent and sorry, fully transparent and fully opaque areas for our cube. So as soon as this finishes rendering, we check it out and there's our result. You can see that we have fully opaque areas. We cannot see the floor. And then we have fully transparent areas where we can see the floor. Now keep in mind, this cube right here 
is still a cube. We still have a full cube right there. If we had collision applied to it, we'd still have collision. We just simply can't see parts of it because we've set up opacity. So if you want to use opacity for things like masking out leaves of a tree and or an effect, for example, like a um, a, wa a race flag waving, that's what you use opacity for. So keep in mind it can be a solid value or it could be a texture where you have black and white determining if it's opaque or not. Now opacity mask is basically going to be the same thing except it is an on or off value. Opacity can be partially transparent. As you saw, we put in 0 0.5 for our opacity and we were able to have a partially transparent cube. We could see through it partially. It wasn't completely solid and it wasn't completely transparent. Mask is black and white. It is a bit. It is on or off. So if we turn this back to masked and we go ahead and hook up our texture sample into opacity mask, for example, what you're going to see is the same exact result as we had before. Where it is either on or off. The difference is we are not using opacity to determine it. We are using the opacity mask. One thing you'll notice also is I actually have an item that I can click on now. Because this is considered on or off, but the item itself is still physically there, it's a lot easier to work with. We can click on it, you can see the edges, and you can see how the opacity mask is working. So a good example of an opacity mask would be if you had a fence. Now you could take this fence and you could model it out of 40 pieces of wood, and then you could have 40 different meshes or one mesh with 40 different pieces of geometry. That way you had a clear transparent part between each board. Or you could make it a solid wall, for example, a solid object, which is only, you know, four, six sides, sorry. And then you could put an opacity mask on it that looks like the wooden boards. That way it can see through each of the ones. Or if you had a chain link fence, You'd use an opacity mask because it's either going to be on or off. You don't need a partially transparent fence. It's going to be either a hole or it's going to be the wire for the fence. So that's what an opacity mask would be for. You'd basically design your mask itself, apply it to your texture. Like let's say, for example, I mean, we have this. If we were to stretch it out, and unfortunately, this doesn't affect the tiling. So actually, let's just drop this in. Let's see if we can do quick little example here. We'll use a texture coordinate. What we're going to do here is we're going to set it up where we have a tiling of 10. And go ahead and apply this. What this should do is give us that effect. Now, unfortunately, since I have two, actually, you know what? We'll go ahead and we'll do this to 0.5. Let's, let's do my, let's do my little fence here. Let's see how this works. See if I can fake a fence quickly. And texture coordinate we will cover in a different video. There we go. So I actually have a solid object here. Uh, you weren't, if you weren't cheating and couldn't see it from the side. Let's say it was like this. And let's say this was a fence. Rather than have all these individual rows, you simply have one texture that is set up with an opacity mask and you went ahead and you set it up in your area and there you go you have a fence it's you know not the best thing but if this is off from the side and they can't tell why have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten why have ten different meshes or one mesh with ten different pieces when you have one square cube here and you use an opacity mask and you can see through it properly and it works just like you would expect so, to summarize, we've got the opacity mask, which is basically on or off, and it basically masks out your texture. Opacity, which is, it, it could be zero, it could be one, or any value in between. It's useful, for example, frosted glass is not going to be completely clear. 
you're going to want it to have that slight bit of opaqueness. So you might have like a 0.2 or 0.3, so it's slightly opaque. Emissive color gives you a slight glow and is not affected by lighting. And normal is a simple normal map input and it's useful for faking texture detail. So that is going to be the end of our third video. We're going to go ahead and cover four more of these in our next video and then wrap it up after that. We will try to aim for wrapping it up after five videos. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.